So what is this pharmaceutical thing all about? Now here's what we know. We know that pharmaceutical from the Webster's Collegiate Dictionary and studying the word etymologically or according to the true word or the true meaning, we know that pharmaceutical means to practice in its root, to practice witchcraft in its primary root, and then secondarily to use medicines. But now medicines, the root of pharmacone, is also as a poison or a medicine. So with that sort of, I guess, knowledge of the, of the properties of different plants and different roots and different herbs, shamans and um, even the priestcraft of old, they were like the ancient doctors. They were the physicians of the ancient time because of this knowledge, you understand, that they, that they held knowledge which could heal and knowledge which could make ill or even kill. And this is interesting. But we always think in this Western Gentile culture that drugs and pharmacy, in a sense, just go hand in hand. Somehow they both go hand in hand. But when we look at the root now, biblically, of pharmaceutical and Pharma, you understand? Pharma. We find this word, the G5331. You understand? Pharma, K or Kia, 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 Kia. Pharma, Kia, Pharma, Pharma, Kia, Pharma. This is where we get pharmaceutical. So this K was turned into a C sound in later English, and we get our modern so-called English pharmaceutical. So now, in this society, the pharmaceutical is the dispensary, dispensary of, of drugs. You understand? But these, Imarich, but these um, drugs are really subordinate to pharma and the big pharma, the funny farm of Babylon. But what's behind this funny farm of Babylon, biblically speaking, is very interesting. Because what's behind it, we're going to find out right now. Because now as we take this word, this is the root word, right, that links now with the English farmer and pharmaceutical, G5331. Now, what does this mean? What does this mean? What does this word mean? Now, this word here is defined as, as meaning the use or administering of drugs. You understand? The use or the administering of these different potions or poisons, as it would be. You understand? potent medicinal potions, healing potions, or certain things that would be poisonous or even deadly. Because the secondary definition is poisoning. Not poison, but actually poisoning. This is interesting because we know that the root of this in, in the English means to practice witchcraft. So this is why they chose this particular name for this particular industry that we know as the so-called drug industry or big pharma and the pharmaceutical industry. Now, um, there's a C definition, or the third one is interesting. It says sorcery, magical arts. Sorcery, magical arts. It says, often found in connection, and this is what we thought was so very interesting, especially still in this time when the passing or the death of Whitney Houston and all this drug talk is still very fresh here in 2012. When we look at this word, 
and we connect this pharma with drugs, you understand, and the so-called Rx or the prescription, and pharma kia, G, the Greek 5331, and these these definitions of the word, to use or administering of drugs, poisoning, sorcery, magical arts, often found in connection, often found in connection with idolatry and fostered by it. So this is found in connection, the farmer is found in connection with the worship of false gods known as idols. Do you have an idol? Who is your idol? Think about that for a moment because we were saying this earlier that in watching some of the news clips about the Whitney Houston, the, the funeral thing, and, and different people talking about what they like or recall of of the late singer's life or persona or, or whatever. One person just, I think they came out to church. They had came out to church where they're supposed to have this um, 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 funeral coming up um, on the weekend. Um, and uh, she came out to church and they asked her a couple of questions. They said, yeah, Whitney is my idol. I, I, I didn't catch, I don't think I caught that clip. I mean, you know, you just turn and you see something there and you're not really, you know, ready to get in the bang, but still, it's, it's fresh here. You understand? That Whitney is her idol. And a lot of people who go to church and consider themselves to be very, um, really just, you understand, or good Christians or, you know, have some standing in their congregation and everything like that. They have no problem with having idols. And think about idolatry 2012. I mean, the, the, the level of idolatry, where idolatry now is, is accepted as being okay. But then notice what's in connection now with idolatry. Now, if Whitney Houston can, in this world, in this system, be considered an idol or a diva, you understand, which means a female god or a goddess. She's a goddess. She's a, a celebrity. That means she's like a star. She's, she's a, a, a star. Not God's star, you understand, but a man-made star. Don't you see a connection here? One and the same as drugs. For the majority, all drugs, according to the definition of what is a drug, is something that man has to make. He has to process it. He has to convert it from its natural or creational aspect into, into what, he, what he's seeking to, whatever he's seeking to do, but he has to make it. So drugs are man-made. This is why we say marijuana is not a drug because marijuana is God-created. It's not man-made. In fact, they've been, this is one of the problems with the pharmaceutical industry is that they've been trying to find a way to, they synthesize different things, but still it really doesn't compare to all of the God-given properties that are in the herb in its fullest form. You know, they're trying to, even ones have now discovered that for people like Montel Williams, who I forget his particular um, disease, but um, he has to um, take marijuana and even smoke marijuana, and there's others that smoke marijuana because they find that it's through the smoke marijuana that they really get the direct healing. And it's not like smoking a cigarette, you know, or, you know, doing something, something similar or something else. It is very different. And, and studies have been done and concluded this already. But there's a big fight against marijuana, you understand, from the pharmaceutical industry and from big pharma. 
And then we learn this right here. We learn, well, what is the high? Let me put this put big right here. You understand? We learn what is behind Big Pharma. We're getting closer, right? You see now the connection with idolatry. So when you go to the Strong's um, Concordance, the G5331, you, go, you could go to Blue Letter Bible or there's other references and hopefully one's, you know, the disciples especially um, begin to familiarize yourself how you can do this, and like we said, there's software and certain programs that um, I think they're freeware and shareware, and we'll try to make it available ASAP. So just make that request, hit us up for contact on that particular item if one is interested in that, um, www.lojsociety.org, and check out what we have on the studies page, all the free downloadable items there as well, so one can... Um, maximize the time, redeem the time, because these days are absolutely or completely um, evil, as they, in a sense, should be prophetically in this time. You see, so that, that doesn't shake us in our mind, you know, because of, because of spiritual strength. We're not shaken. You know, many people don't have that spiritual strength, and therefore they're, they're suffering a heavily burdened soul, and the soul is the suke, the suke is the psyche, and the psyche is often defined as the mind state. So a lot of folk are having a lot of um, uh, spiritual uh, conflict, you understand, and their consciences, you know, are, are, are not clear. This is why the gospel, the good news is important, you know, to be preached, to be proclaimed to be lived, to be exampled for, you know what I'm saying, so that these lost ones hopefully can, can find salvation before it is too late. But unfortunately, like in the case of um, Whitney Houston, we can tell everybody knows she was suffering from some demons of some sort or another. And the thing that she used to... Um, help her cope, it is said, was these drugs, you understand? Crack is a drug, you understand? Because crack is not cocaine, but then cocaine is not the coca leaf. You see what I'm saying? The indigenous people use the leaf as is. There's nothing that is a drug in that. But then people who want to, you know, get a greater high, you understand, or perhaps use it in another medicinal or medical related way, have to process it and to make it into a man-made product or a drug. So behind the pharma, the big pharma, and the pharmakia, the, the pharmakia, which is the root of uh, pharmaceutical, we have these three primary um, definitions. It's the use or the administering of drugs. So we should be clear on what a drug is, you understand, and what the definition of drug, the qualification of drug. Secondly, the second point, or the B, is poisoning. Poisoning. It refers to poisoning. On the C level, it is sorcery. Magical arts or witchcraft, you can put witchcraft there, and we're going to point, that, point this out coming up, often found in connection. But that, that, this part is here, here I find interesting. Hopefully later on we'll, we'll put this on the screen for you, but it's, it's from the Thales, the Thales uh, lexicon, the Thales lexicon that in some search engines like the Blue Letter Bible, um, dot, I think O-R-G is, is out there on the Internet. You can find it and, and check it out for yourself. It has this here, and it says um, that is sorcery, magical arts, often found in connection with idolatry and forced by it. So the, let's see if we can overstand this correctly. The 
pharmaceutical or big pharma, the funny farm, the big farm, the pharmaceutical industry that makes all these wild and crazy drugs, right? A few of them that seem to the older kind of drugs, they actually had a report on this, the older drugs, you know what I'm saying, are much better. You know, the old kind of brand, they have a lot of these new brand kind of drugs, you understand, which are, many of them don't even have any rating on. They basically are still in the uh, uh, experimental stage. So why they get out there like that, and then they have these cases where people are going crazy, where people are dying, so forth and so on, like the children on Ritalin and all this other kind of stuff like that. Now they, they're trying to get everybody to um, vaccinate their children, and so there's absolutely no... Um, you know, no negative side effects for their child with vaccination. You know, there's been a big thing in the, in the media because one of the doctors that, that brought the evidence out in the public um, was part of the medical industry, but he kind of broke the secrecy or the silence on it. Now they've been able to kind of shame his name and say that he was wrong and I think he got disqualified or so forth and so on, and that is to tell the public that he didn't know what he was talking about, although many have, 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 have been able to establish and verify additional, since his report and evidence came forward, I don't, you, you could uh, forgive me, I don't recall his name at the, at the present time, but it's a recent story, we saw it on BBC so forth and so on. But what we're saying here is that the pharmaceutical industry is connected with idolatry. This is one of the main reasons why we find that there seems to be a concentration of these kind of celebrity cases that sound so similar, you understand, and this epidemic, because there's no man-made law that can stop it, really, you see, until there's a crisis. You know, problem, reaction, solution, the so-called Hegelian dialectic, even though before uh, Hegel discovered, quote, end quote, it, others knew this kind of, di you know, this, this kind of um, um, thesis, antithesis, and synthesis sort of, sort of way of coming to a sort of a, 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 a consensus. So they want something to come about. They want to reshape society. And many of these kind of cases, some of them are actual things that even maybe surprise them a little bit. You understand? But many of these kind of cases have already been, it's like um, um, a, a forethought. It's like, it's like, it's like uh, malice of forethought. You know, they've, they've already thought beforehand about these sort of things and to do these, these sort of things because it's a part of reaching what they want, the next stage of society or the next stage of legislation, the next stage of, of, of human behavior or whatever like that, everybody being human, which is another interesting um, idea, being human. Only an alien would be so caught up in being human we who are human have human experiences every day, all day, and, and at night as well. You know, so that's another matter right there. But it's saying here that, that um, sorcery, magical arts, one of the pharmacia um, definitions, which is the pharmaceutical or big pharma in, in our world, or in this world rather, in this present world, is often found in connection or seclorum, in the seclorum that we are passing through, that pharma, the big pharma, is found in connection with idolatry. And look at this rise of idolatry. You understand? I mean, there's always been so in America on some level or another. We, we, we can see that when we study um, American history. You know, you know, and from different perspectives, we see that there, there, there was this sort of, but it, it, it was nowhere compared to where it is today, where you can have people coming out of church, as we saw on a local newscast, 
and the woman came out of the church, and I think it, it said something, her name, and what she, whether she's a resident or she goes to this church, and she's saying, like, Whitney's my idol. And I'm like, how strange it is because the New Testament says to flee idolatry. You know, the New Testament says that. So who is to blame that these um, black church goers don't know that and so easily can be so flippant about that? And then when we look at a woman such as um, Whitney Houston, that there was really no intervention. One's act like the power of God could not have intervened in that situation. I'm talking about from those who knew her from the so-called church. You see what I'm saying? And these things were not hidden, surely from them who were closer to her and who were family. So that just that begs, that begs a, a, a humane sort of a question. But the connection with idolatry is clear. But the second part of this says, and fostered by it. And fostered by it. So the pharmaceutical industry is being fostered by idolatry or witchcraft. Or we can say it as it is, Satanism. You understand? Much of it. I mean, look at some of these names for some of these pharmaceutical. What, does, what do these names mean? You know, before when something had a name, even in Latin, you know, this was the old European classical model. These names meant something. They had some relevance to something. You know, many of these names, I don't want to say these names because these names sound like fallen angels. They sound like names of fallen angels. A lot of these popular um, pharmaceutical um, products, you know, that many people either recreationally or occasionally or more often use um, are associated with names that be a striking resemblance to the names of false gods slash fallen angels or, or, or demon spirits. And this would explain why in many of these cases that have been reported, of people having even deadly um, side effects, you know, and, and they tell you in some of these commercials, they, they tell you what the side effects can be. And then they say don't mix it with alcohol, which is another drug, but that's a legal drug. Alcohol is a legal drug because of the whole commodity economic factor. They've made it a legal drug. You understand? So you can mix those two, and then you can really have something fatal. But the part that many of us don't see is the spiritual wickedness, is, is what's going on spiritually because of the connection of pharma, big pharma, with idolatry and being forced, the pharmaceutical industry being forced by the witchcraft industry. So what we see at the very same time is a rise in the pop culture um, um, reception or, or the rise in their, their cravenness for um, the black arts, what's called so-called the black arts, but witchcraft. Let's call it what is witchcraft. You understand, for witchcraft and Satan, Satanistic so-called magic, such as the Harry Potter and a lot of these other kind of um, um, things, movies that have been going around, even the cartoons. You know, if you look at some of these cartoons that many of your children might be seeing, you know, um, and you look at what they're talking about, they're talking about some stuff that will make you go Google search on the internet because you might not be quite familiar with it. So they're being programmed and indoctrinated. So this is not something that is newly sprung up. We don't want to make it seem like it just happened just before Whitney Houston died or something like that. No, it, or before Michael Jackson. You understand? This and it doesn't go way back, but it goes pretty far back and a couple of centuries at least 
to get to the modern roots of it. But here in the Bible, this particular, this particular, um, there's one more definition. It says metaphysically, on the, or, or, or metaphorically rather, it, it refers to the deception and seductions of idolatry. So pharma and, and pharmakia, it relates to the deceptions in a metaphorical way, the deceptions and seductions of idolatry and it uses Revelation XVIII or Revelation 18.23. So the three main verses are Revelation 9 and 21 for the first meaning as the use or the administering of, uh, of, 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 a, of a drug, but in the sense of poisoning, um, Revelation, um, Revelation 9, verse 21, um, with it as sorcery, magical arts found in connection with idolatry, American idolatry, and fostered by it. We have Galatians 5 and 20. And um, there's some other references, not to this exact word, but to the Hebraic side of it. We'll hold off on that. And the third one, dealing with deceptions and seductions of idolatry, we have Revelation 18 and 23. These are the three places. Now, of these, of these three places in which we have pharmaceuticals or pharmakia, the root of pharmaceutical and big pharma in the Bible, two of the times it refers to sorcery. So in the Bible, it won't say pharmaceuticals. That would probably be too clear, and if it did say that, they would probably call it sorcery or something else, you see. But um, the other place in Galatians, uh, 5 and 20, it refers to it as witchcraft. And what is interesting, in the, in the verse, there's an association there with idolatry. Let us go there if we can. So we're going to go to the first reference for pharmakia, which is the root of pharmaceutical. So now we can both understand what you know, a drug is, what the definition of a drug is, you understand, what's the, 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 the context. The context is very important, and we tried to give that in the, in the first two parts of this lecture. And now here, we want to touch on the biblical evidence. Now that we hope we were able to put this subject matter of drugs, um, narcotics, uh, a big pharma or the pharmaceutical industry and and RX. We're going to save probably RX for 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 later. But that basically is the is the prescription. That's when the doctor writes something. But it has a medical as well as a religious um, usage in, in 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 religious or Roman Catholic usage in the in the misses what they call the misses or their Latin liturgies. That symbol is there for the response. That symbol is for a response. So it was like the priest is the one that call or say something, and the people would respond in that conducting of the liturgy or in relation to this symbol, the Roman mass, what's known as the, 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 the missa or their particular liturgy. So... The two uses of that are interesting as well. But here we're going to verse 20. Verse 20. It says, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies. Now, this is just a small fragment. This is part of a, of, of a list. You understand? Or even a litany in a sense, but I wouldn't call that really a litany, a negative kind of a litany of these, these kind of attributes. But to put it, this in context, I'm going to read the bait or the paragraph 
you know, the, 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 the paragraph here that contains this, this idea here. Paul is speaking of the Spirit is what gives victory over sin. The, the, it's, the, it's the Holy Spirit and, and the Holy Spirit mingling with our spirit and our spirit inclined to the Holy Spirit that gives us that victory over, over the systemic anomaly. The systemic anomaly. That's what mortals, you know, you know people who live on the earth and in this seclorum, you know, secularites call sin. So those who live in the seclorum of this world, they call it sin. In the Matrix movie, they call it the systemic anomaly. And the systemic anomaly in sin, which leads to death, is all part of, um, you know, the systemic anomaly, that sin that leads to death. It's all connected. You understand? Um, and we need to gain the victory over it. And here it says in verse 17, for the flesh, the flesh, our flesh side, our so-called human um, nature, lusteth against the spirit. It lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary, the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye, that ye would. Now here, Hwariya Paulos, or the Apostle Paul, is describing the the struggle that every true Christian, every true uh, Meshahawiyan, every, every, every true um, Christian, Messiahite, follower of our black Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMoshiach, known as Jesus Christos or the Jesus Christ of the Bible, the Jesus Christ of the Word, not the whitewashed and perverted images and theologies that has gotten um, mingled in the Western um, grafted branch of Christianity. But Paul is explaining now the, the struggle, you know, because even we ourselves, you know, we go through certain struggle where the flesh part, you know, our physical flesh material life, you know what I mean, um, struggles against or lust for our attention and for and, 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 and for that exclusivity denying the spirit, but the spirit also seeks that time. You know, we may not make the time to study and to, to pray, um, but we sometimes find ourselves doing other things, you understand, because of the flesh nature. So if that happens as a brother or a sister, that's cool. You know, I mean, I mean, acknowledge that. Recognize that. So when you see this here, you're like, oh, whoa, yes, I, I, I get it. That, that is true. Be honest. But, he says, if ye be led of the Spirit. Now, it's what is leading. See, that's the key. He says, if ye be led of the Spirit, ye are not under the law. Now, when it says we're not under the law, we're not under the judgment of the law. If we're led by the Spirit, then we are in the law. We are in Christ's law. And we're not violating God's law. If we are being led of the Spirit, we are not under the law, to say under the condemnation of the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest. Now here, Hawari Apollos is trying to explain to the, his Galatian, Galatian audience and, and, and the church in that particular province, in that state, in that borough, at that time. He's saying to them, now the works of the flesh are manifest. They're obvious. You can see the works of the flesh because you can see the flesh. You can't really see the works so much of the spirit as easily as a sighted man can see the works of the, the flesh. Which are these? Now it's going to give us a list of, 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 of a description, an idea. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, or some would say sensuality, idolatry, witchcraft, 
hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, reveling, revelings or, or revelings, revelings. You know what reveling is? It's those parties. That's clubbing. That's what reveling is. That, that's basically what clubbing like on the week and basically is. And how do we know? Because we've been there and we've done that. And such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have told you in time past, that they which do such things, those who live whose way of life that is, not that, oh, you may have fallen and done this or that on, on occasion. You repented of it. You understand? If it was that which you could repent of, murders and those things are a little bit deeper. You have to go to the one whom you had offended. And you know what that entails. You see, so it says, of the which I tell you before, as I have told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God, that those who do such things. Now, some would think it means that, well, if you did it once, you do it. You know, there's a way to comprehend language rightly. You see what I'm saying? Um, and when you comprehend the language, even of the, the, the text, those who do, those who live in that way, like if they've committed adultery, you understand, they haven't repented, they will go and do it again. If they've done fornication, you understand, or pornication, they would do it again. You understand? If they've lived in uncleanness, spiritual, you understand, um, requisina, in a sense, um, they would do it again. Lasciviousness is interesting because that, I think, is pointing to um, 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 the, 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 the lust, you know, living, you know, that, that's like being sexy, sexy, sexy. You know, some people live to be sexy in that sense. Well, that's kind of the gateway into the lasciviousness, getting an idea. These words often are fuller in what they, in, in their contents than the English words that we use in our day to day. You see what I'm saying? That's why um, if you notice one of the big frustrations in humanity is basically communication. You know, it's just being able to communicate and be and, and be and be civil. You know, to be civil and to be moral and, and to communicate, you know, in a spirit of truth and honesty and love is very difficult. Part of it is because of the damage that has been done in, in the spiritual tower of Babel, of this Babylon, with the word. You see, and the scripture now is that key to really understanding these languages and understanding these basic ideas that we live with and deal with every day and become part of that prison where we are not able to see them, comprehend what it is, and also overcome it by being led of the Spirit. So here the word witchcraft in verse 20 is that pharmakia. Pharmakia, that's the word right there according to the Greek. Now, the two places where it is as not witchcraft, pharmacy, pharmaceutical, it is as, as sorcery. This is what takes on a very interesting dynamic when we put it into perspective with how pharmaceutical and prescription and drugs and, and addicts and all this crazy, wild and aberrant and even quite demonic behavior that is associated with it. But since we live in a secular, um, a secular phase of this end time, people do not want to ascribe any um, God um, word to it. They don't want to ascribe God's logos, his logic to it. They want to leave, as they say, leave Jah out of it, leave the Bible out of it. And this is part of what is, 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 is causing things to get worse. 
and not better. No matter how much people try to hype themselves up, things continue to get worse because this we're, we're in these end days. You know what I'm saying? We're in these so-called last days. It's not the last day, so to speak, but definitely we should know we're in the last days because behold, the signs, you know, the signs of the time. So here it says in verse 21, Revelation chapter 9, verse 21, and this is where the sixth trumpet was sounded. It says, verse 21, neither repented they of their murders, neither repented they. They did not have a change of mind. They know that they, they had murdered the innocent. You understand that they had abused the widow and the orphan, had, 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 had robbed the laborer of the laborer's wages by fraud and framing mischief by their man-made laws and have caused the system of things to be failing and at this point of the abyss where it is at right now. But still, in spite of it all, they do not repent, have a change of mind of their murders, nor of their sorceries. So if you were to read that in the, in the Septuagint in the Greek sense, it would be nor of their pharmakia or their pharmaceuticals, of their murders and pharmaceuticals. Now, there's been a lot of news as of late and even before with, with, with pharmaceuticals and this kind of addiction, see, they call it addiction, but really addiction theologically is actually um, demonic um, possession or obsession. It could be obsession means it does not, the demoniacs the, the do not possess it in that sense. One might not have sold it, you understand, but they're under that oppression, obsession for them, but to the person who is resisting or who is not going along or not willing or still unwilling, it is like oppression or downpression. And this is what they call in science depression. And so for a certain depressed people or people who claim to be and have been diagnosed to be depressed, they give them these sorceries. And lo and behold, not all of them, but a shocking, alarming, uh, alarming um, numbers have been reported that have done some wild and shocking things under, under um, this witchcraft. Because let's not forget that the Germans, the Nazis, the Nazis gave their soldiers all kind of, um, you know, drugs, you know, pharmaceuticals. So when we're watching the, the Germans, they seem all hyped up and stuff. They're high. They were high. And we also know in America has been doing this with its soldiers too. There's some videos and documentaries that people have been really complaining about that. But on a certain level, from the military planner's point of view, um, they get their money's worth when – their soldiers are properly um, prescribed, you know, their, their pharmaceutical um, drugs. And it says, nor of their fornication, nor of their fornication. So fornication, in this sense, would cover the whole hypersexual atmosphere that we live in this whole hypersexual atmosphere and everything that goes on in it because of it. You see, like we said about um, pharmaceuticals, it's connection with idolatry and forced it by it. So you have to recognize the connection with the sexuality and a hyped up sexuality where we have all sort of stuff going on in this present time fornication or pornication, nor of their thefts, nor of their thefts. I mean, one of the biggest thefts, actually, and people don't want to talk about it, 
But just think about if it were you, because it very well can become you, the United States of America, in a sense, was a theft of the Native American Indian land, and everybody knows it. And everybody knows the murders and the sorcery and the fornication, you know, and the theft, the thefts that had gone on to achieve that objective. Yet people who, who, who want to live the dream, which they are probably doped up and high or on some pharmaceutical prescription or alcohol kind of combination, you understand, to, to, to stay in the dream and still believe, stay asleep. You know, you see the dream thing, American dream, and you, you have a dream. You can daydream, but that's, you know, that's, that's kind of immature-ish on a certain level. It's, we're not talking about having a vision. We're talking about daydreaming. You understand? But you can dream proper. Dream proper is when you are asleep. Even scientists know that when ones are in a dream state, their brain is at a different level of activity. It's like if one is not fully conscious. You understand? So when ones repent, one doesn't just change a part of their mind, but their whole mind state, their whole mentality is changed you understand, or changes to conform, you understand, with the image of Jesus Christos, with his testimony, with his word, with his truth, you understand, through being led by the Holy Spirit, not by pharmaceuticals. So that's one area. There's some more in this chapter, but you can check this out where, you know, it talks about there's plagues and ones were worshiping devils and idols of gold and silver. I mean, what was it, the Grammy Award? And, and what they give them, something silver or gold, and the Oscar, I think it's something gold, they're silver and gold, they're idols. I mean, who is Oscar? Who is Oscar? How do people know they're not worshiping a devil? But then some people say when they sell their soul, they will do anything, you understand, to become a star. So it, it, it speaks about the fact that they worship these things which neither, you know, which, which can't see, which can't hear, which can't walk. They worship these idols, these, 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 these images of, of demons, these images of demons. Now, the third, the third verse right here, Let's just touch on this so we've completed all the areas for pharmaceutical, pharma, um, 1823. 1823. Now, this speaks of Babylon. This is speaking of Babylon. And this is the angelic view of Babylon in Revelation chapter 18. And what we're going to look at is we're going to look at the third, the third place in the scriptures where we have pharmakia, which is pharmaceutical in the Bible, it means, right, it means sorcery. You see, this word here, it means sorcery, sor, sor, sorry, and witch, witchcraft. Sorcery and witchcraft. You understand? But this is this is this. This is pharma. This is pharmaceutical. This is your pharmaceutical right there. All right. Now the third verse, the third um, verse that we want to document here. It says, "And the light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee." And the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. For thy merchants, this is the judgment being spoken to um, um, Babylon. For thy merchants were the great men of the earth, all those who had the trump card. For by thy sorceries, there you go, for by thy 
pharmaceuticals were all nations deceived. That's deep. That's deep. Because we know that pharmaceuticals have gone global. Pharmaceuticals is a, is a, is a very big thing from Jah's perspective prophetically. Because prophetically, this is your sorceries. This is your sorceries. And it says in verse 24, to wrap up the chapter, it says, And in her was found the blood in Babylon, in this system of things, in this seclorum. You know what I'm saying? You know the seclorum from the dollar bill. Let's just remind you again, you know what I'm saying, whose inscription is on this? Wa, Washington, Washington. You know what I'm saying? Why are you saying Satan? Washington. All right. Whose inscription is on this right here? The I, the pyramid. That right there is your spiritual Egypt. You know what I'm saying? Your spiritual Egypt. And then we have that link also with Egypt. And notice something right here. This, you see this right here, that B? You see that B? If you see what's around the B, what um, state is around is New York, New York a state so great they had to name it twice. They call New York, New York the what state? It's the empire. You understand? It's the empire state. It was supposed to be New York. You understand? From, you know, mother is England, Great Britannia. That's the mother. And this is the virgin daughter. This is the virgin America is that virgin daughter of Babylon. Why is she a virgin? Because she's never had a crisis that really effed her up yet. But prophetically, she is overdue or just about due for one. But she's still in the labor pangs. We're still in the labor pangs that is leading forward to that birth of the new age. And in her was found the blood of the prophets and of the Kedusan, the saints, and of all that were slain upon the land, or all that were slain upon the earth. So this is, this is very, very important. We're just focusing here on pharmaceutical, pharmakia, making that witchcraft sorcery link with these pharmaceuticals, because more evidence is out there that will show the other side of it you know, would be basic evidentiary, but the major witness is the Bible. You understand? The major witness is the Bible because the time period of, of, of not just history, but logic that it contains, even by studying the words and the etymology, many of these same words we use today. So who knew that sorcery in the Bible is pharmaceuticals? And then it begins to make sense when we recognize what's going on, what's happening, why so many people are going crazy, you know, and why so many people are just dropping out or dying or, 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 or ending up in, in, in some really, let's say, God-awful situations. This is why the word, the word said, come out of her, my people, not just a physical removal, that's the fulfillment of it, but it must begin first from being led by the spirit. So the spiritual is first. The spiritual then helps our mind, our heart, our suke, our soul, our psychological aspect. And then the physical movement is, is very much easier and a fate accompli, an accomplished fact. Amen and amen. So brothers and sisters and mothers, once again, I give thanks for you bearing with I and I in this particular study right here. And we know that Jah loves you because you love studying Jah's word and discovering the revelation of the King of Kings and his Christ with I and I. So once again, Shalom, Ras Tefari, your brother, Wendem Yadom, Ras Yadinos Tefari of the Line of Jude Society. For more information, go to www.lojsociety.org. Shalom.